Hello, everyone. Happy Monday night. Tonight, we're going to be featuring Pretty Perennials. See if we can find on Facebook. Okay, there we go. All right. Let's see who we have on. As soon as you hop on, go ahead and give me a hello so I know you're there. Hi, Laura. Hello, Lynette. And let's see. Let's get rid of that. Thank you for sharing, Jennifer. And hello. We are doing some fairly simple cards tonight, if you can believe it. <laughs> I uh, decided that I should try and do some simpler, less involved cards. We'll see how it goes. See what you guys think. I was <clears throat> looking to make some cards for uh, Stampin' Up! has for demonstrators a challenge for what they call simple stamping. So I was attempting the simple stamping. And uh, so we'll see what you think of tonight's projects. All right. So you will find the Pretty Perennials stamp set. This is it. And the coordinating dies, which can be purchased in a bundle. And all of my dies are not here because I used some of them. Uh, you will find that on page 31 of the January to June mini catalog. This is Dina Rico's Million Dollar Sales Achiever stamp set. She got to help design it. So we're going to be making some, an Easter card. Well, we'll make the Easter card if we don't run out of time. But uh, We're going to be making a birthday card. And then we're also going to be using Make Today Ridiculously Awesome. This is another Million Dollar Sales Achiever stamp set. This one by Rhonda Wade. And it is just a, um, a sentiment stamp, but these are large sentiments. And this, uh, the <clears throat> fonts were actually written by Sarah Douglas's uh, spouse. And she is the CEO of Stampin' Up. So anyway, there's that stamp set. We'll be using that later. Well, actually, I think we're going to start with that card. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's move these things out of the way. Our first card is probably the least involved. So... We have ink cover colors in Cinnamon Cider, Magenta Madness, and Just Jade, but I'm not sure I'm using the ink of Just Jade because <clears throat> I changed my mind and we'll be using the light Just Jade stamp and blend. For our cardstock, we are going to have a card base of Magenta Madness, and this is five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the center at four and a quarter. And we can go ahead and burnish those score lines. Okay. 
So we've got that ready. And we're going to need a piece of the Flowers in Season Designer Series paper. This is in the annual catalog. This will be retiring, uh, I believe. We usually retire all of our DSP. So it's a six by six paper stack. And these are the patterns that you get. These patterns all coordinate with this current year's um, in colors. So the 2021 to 20, 20, 20 to 2022 in colors. Woo. Okay, so we're going to be using a piece of the cinnamon cider as a base for our card. And we can actually go ahead and just attach this to our card base. This piece is cut at hmm, four and an eighth by five and three eighths. We'll just put that on. So the challenge that Stampin' Up! gave us this month was to use stamps, ink, paper, and we were allowed to use some DSP designer series paper. So this is what we have so far. Then we're going to take a piece of basic white. We're going to stamp on that. We're going to go ahead and do that right now. And we're going to use Make Today Ridiculously Awesome. And this piece of white is cut at 3 and 5 eighths by 4 and 7 eighths. Let me find the correct plate. We're going to be using the Stamparatus. Stamparatus comes with two removable plates so that you can take your plates and flip them around. It's a repositioning stamp tool. Um, this particular mat is an extra that you can buy. It's a little bit thicker than the standard foam mat. This is the standard foam mat that comes with the Stamparatus when you purchase it. And this is for using with foam stamps. Or, I'm sorry, photopolymer stamps, but we don't need either one of those mats because we are using a red rubber stamp and so we're going to remove that. I've already placed my uh, stamp in the, well, I guess I haven't because I guess it's in the wrong spot here. That's not going to work. Did I use a, hang on, let me make sure that I have the right size. Nope, I do not. This is not the right size piece of cardstock. Let me cut what I need. I need a three and three quarters by five. That's what I need. Let me flip this out of the way real quick. I'm going to get a five inch piece. Cut it at three and three quarters. All right, that'll be better. That will fit our placement better. All right, still doesn't look quite right. So when you're using the Stamparatus, Going to take your stamp, put it on your paper where you want it. And 
then we're gonna just close the lid and pick up the stamp. Okay, now to ink it up, it's best if you put an empty stamp case or an ink pad or even a block underneath your um, the lid of your Stamparatus so that you're inking a level surface that helps you uh, not get ink all over the lid of your Stamparatus. So we're gonna go ahead and ink this up. And I'm using the Stamparatus because I want a nice, bold image. Okay, so now I want it to be a little bit more bold than that, so I'm gonna go ahead and re-ink it a second time. And this will ensure, as long as my paper's up here in the corner and hasn't moved, that I will stamp exactly on top of the last. All right, and now I have a nice, crisp, clean image. And this card is ready to go. Okay. And hopefully I put that far enough down. I did barely. Okay. Should have auditioned that before I stamped it. I could have gone just a little bit higher. But this will work. Okay. So then to clean this, you just take your Simply Chamois. Hold it up. Wipe off your stamp. And you're ready to go. Okay. So I'm just going to set this aside now. Move that out of our way. All right. So then I've taken a piece of the True Love Designer Series paper. And that is this beautiful black and white stack. I think we talked about this maybe last week. It has all these beautiful images that you can leave black and white or you can color them. I'm going to show you tonight a really easy way to color. So there's your patterns. This is great paper, especially if you like black and white. All right, let's set that aside. So I'm going to take my blending brushes. You could use um, sponge daubers. I'm going to do this really quickly. So I'm going to use some. Um, I'm going to start with my Just Jade, though, my blend, and I'm going to color in my leaf. It did not work well with. Uh, the blending brushes. This area is much too small and close to the flowers. So I'm just going to color those with my light. I'm not getting fancy. I'm just coloring it. And then I'm going to take a posty note and I'm sort of going to cover this up. I'm going to try to cover it as best I can. Okay. And I forgot the stem on my smaller flower there. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my blending brush. And on a block, I'm going to rub that off. I'll save that. I can use that later. And then I'm just going to start in the center of each flower. And I'm going to try and work outward. 
leaving the color in the center the darkest. And I'm leaving white space, that's good. And then I'll just go back onto my block and pick up some more ink. And then when I'm happy with it, then I can move forward. I think I'm gonna take, I did my last little bud. Let's go ahead, put a little bit of color on there. There we go. All right, so there is my image. Colored quickly and easily. And then I can just take and rub out my color on my paper. I'm gonna grab my Simply Chamois. And I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm gonna rub that on my Simply Chamois. And then I'm gonna take it to my microfiber cloth. And now it's running clean. So it's ready for the next use. And I can use whatever color I want. For my block, then I can just take and rub this on my Simply Chamois and it's ready to go. Okay. That's that and here is our image. So where did we put our, I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to set this on here like this. I'm going to put that down with a little, oh no, I'm going to put that down with dimensionals. I'm going to pop that up. Take a few dimensionals. I want to support this really well because it is designer series paper and I don't want it caving in, especially in the mail. So it might be a little overkill on my dimensionals, but I'm not going to have to worry about it caving. Just going to place this down here, center it up. We're going to add this to the front of our card. And then we're just going to center this up on our card front. And there's the outside of our card, finished. Okay, that was pretty simple. Now for the inside of our card, I've lost one of my pieces I can see. Either that or it didn't come out of the... I'm gonna take a piece of basic white. I'm gonna find my other flower. We'll just cut another one. Of course, I'll find the other one later. I always do. So I'm going to take this sheet, my flower, and I'm going to get one of these that goes along the edge. And I'm going to give it a quick cut. Cut. 
like so. And then we're going to trim that out. Give that a quick fussy cut. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys like that. For those of you who know me, you know that simple cards are rather difficult for me. So I always try to go, oh, I need to add that, and oh, I can add that, and layer it here and layer it there but I've tried really hard to keep these simple and stay within the challenge parameters okay so for the inside of my card I'm going to take the peaceful moments stamp set if I can figure out what I did with it I thought I had it all in this little container. All right. Let's double check. What did I do on the inside? Oh, okay. No, I did not use Peaceful Moment. We're going to take a sentiment from Celebrate Sunflowers. This is in the annual catalog. It's a beautiful stamp set. And we're going to use the Let's Celebrate You. You can currently get this bundle, or this stamp set and the matching dies as a bundle. But once um, the new catalog comes out, you won't be able to get these as a bundle anymore. Or they even could be uh, discontinued. We'll know the retired list will post on Wednesday and um, should these carry over, which I don't know, they may very well retire, but should they carry over, the bundle would not be, they will retire the bundle. So if you're interested in this stamp set and dies, I would get them now. But we're going to use the Let's Celebrate You. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on a block. And I've showed you before, I like to lay it down on my grid paper, get it straight, and then add my block. And then I'm gonna take cinnamon cider ink, which is what we used on the front. And I'm gonna ink that up. And then I'm gonna stamp it down. And I'm gonna do it a little bit lower. Let me see where my other, that makes sure I have enough room for my embellishment at the top. All right, there we go. So we have our sentiment. Now we're gonna take those corner, those edge pieces, which I've cut from the designer series paper, because they're just as good. And we are going to add these to the inside of our card. And these I'm leaving black and white. Just run that along the, stick this one right here in the corner. I cut it right out of the corner. I like to press them so I know that I'm even at the bottom. All right. And we can add this to the inside of our card because this one is finished. Okay, 
And there's card number one. And then we have an envelope. Well, I've just taken a and stamped from the Four Season Floral. This little sunflower. Put it on the front and did a little bit, a tiny little bit of ink blending. Oops, got some dirt on there. Let's get that off. All right, so that's our first card completed. All right. So let's move on to our next project. Let's get a few things out of the way here. I think we're done with these. Put it away, don't put it down. And I have far less mess later. All right. Our next project uses the pretty perennials. And because dies are not in our um, challenge parameters, we're only using the stamp set for this particular card. We're going to start with a card base of terracotta tile. This is one of the retiring in colors. So once that retiring list comes out, these colors will fly off the shelves quickly. Hello, Tracy. I didn't see you come in. Glad you're here. All right, so we've got that. We have a piece of Bumblebee designer series paper, and this is from the uh, 2020 to 2022 six by six paper stack. Okay. We also have scrap of early espresso. Well, actually, this is not a scrap. This is cut at seven eighths by three and five eighths. That's for our inside here. And then we have an inside uh, piece of basic white. We have a piece of early espresso for our card layer. This is cut at four and an eighth by five and three eighths. We have a piece of designer series paper that is an inch by four and seven eighths. Oh, did I not cut it right? No, it goes on this one. Never mind. Yeah, there we go. I left this one just a little long. This is actually by five inches, but we're gonna uh, trim it so that we don't have any white showing. And then we have a piece of early espresso that is cut at four and seven eighths by a half an inch. And then I pre-did on, um, so you didn't have to watch me fussy cut, I stamped the Happy from Pretty Perennials. And I did that in early espresso and then I fussy cut it. And I also stamped sending lots of in early espresso on a piece of white, which is a half inch by two inches. Okay. And then we have our, ins our, our we're going to, um, stamp on this piece here okay so let's set all that aside 
and get our stamping done. Let me get you a clean piece of graph paper, grid paper, so you don't have to look at my messy one. All right. So this piece is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths, and we're going to stamp on it and then we're going to trim it. The colors that we're going to be using on this card are Early Espresso. Let me not lose that piece. Terracotta Tile, Bumblebee, Mint Macaron, and Old Olive. And I took this color palette from the Ornate Garden Designer Series paper, and that's where I got that. Uh, this piece, okay? So we're going to start with the terracotta tile. And we're gonna take the large stamp, the large flower stamp. Okay, and I see I have a little bit of fuzz on here. So I'm gonna take a piece of packing tape and I'm gonna lift all that off to ensure that I get a clean image. Because I've had a little bit of trouble that with this stamp set today. For some reason, I have fuzz everywhere. Okay, so I'm gonna start this image and I'm gonna start just off the center. And then I'm just going to randomly stamp some images. All right. Let me give myself just a little bit over here in this corner. And maybe touch down here. Okay. No, when you do this random stamping, no two cards will be alike. All right, so we're gonna take that and then we're gonna move to our, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and put the leaves in so I've got them where I want them. And we're going to do that with Old Olive and we're going to do some masking. And I've already pre-cut my masks. A little bit of masking paper. Remember when you're cutting masks, you want to cut just inside the lines so that you don't get that halo effect. And these stamps are not symmetrical, so I look for this double edge here. There's the least amount of space between these two petals makes it easy to find unless you don't have those two petals out but in this case I'm going to look for the three edges here on this particular petal and line that up okay now I'm going to take my leaf image and I'm going to stamp, stamp off. And I'm using Old Olive in case I didn't say that. I'm gonna stamp off on the second one. Now, the reason that I'm not um, just going in is that because I'm going off the edge of my mask, it leaves a little line, and I don't want that line on my second image, so I re-ink it in order to avoid that. Okay, so let's put these ones over here. All 
right, now we've got one more. I'm gonna lift that up. This one's gonna be a little tricky to find, I think. Huh. Let's cheat. Let's put it back on here, how we stamped it, and then we can find it a little easier. Looks like I got a smudge there, which is an opportunity to embellish somehow. All right. So I'm good with that so far. And we're gonna set that aside. Move my masks out of the way. And then I'm gonna move to Bumblebee. And I'm gonna take the second largest flower. And I'm going to randomly add some of these. So there we go. So we've got that. Feel like I need a little more right there. All right. I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to grab the mint macaron. And I'm going to take this real small little leaf and I'm going to get some masks for my bumblebee flowers. And this one looks like it goes this way. This here like this. Now, you do not have to be this picky. Can you just put your leaves down um, any old which way you want? Sure you can. That just doesn't tend to be the way I do things. <laughs> I'm going to, I have this little green smudge here, so I'm going to take my leaf and I'm going to stick it right there. And now the only ones who will know that I had a smudge there are you guys. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this one like this. Come in this one in and then move this over here and we'll put a leaf right there. All right. Remove all these masks. And we are almost done with this piece. The flowers need some center, so we are going to take our early espresso. And I'm gonna take this image 
and ink it up. And I'm gonna put those in the center of the large flowers. And then for, whoa, almost lost that, it kinda of went flying. I'm gonna take this real small little center flower and I'm gonna put those in the center of my bumblebees. All right, and then I'm gonna splatter a little bit here and there, just to fill in a little more of that white space. And add a little extra color here and there. All right, I am happy with that. What do you think? Okay, let's refresh that. And there we go. All right, there we go. So this is piece. Now we're going to take this piece and we're gonna put it in our trimmer and we're gonna trim it down to three inches. Okay. And we're gonna decide which side we want to trim. keeping in mind that the side that we trim is going to be an inside piece. Okay, so we're, I don't want to do that. I'm going to do it this way. Okay, so I'm going to cut three inches right there. And now this we can use uh, as a decoration on the inside. Okay. So to this piece, we're going to add this half inch strip by four and seven eighths strip. We're going to add it right along here, like so. So I'm just going to take some liquid adhesive and I'm going to run a little bead right along the edge there. And before I go any further, I'm going to grab my silicone mat. So I don't end up with glue all over my desktop. And I'm gonna place this down. And then I'm just gonna butt this up next to that. I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch is all. Okay, and I do have a tiny bit of a edge over and that's great because I'll trim that off in a minute. And then we're gonna take our piece of ornate garden designer series paper. And you necessarily don't have to have a one inch strip. You could use three quarters or even a half inch strip. Oh, well, we're gonna put this about in the center here. So I just want to give myself extra room to glue. So we're going to take and add the liquid glue right along here. And again, we're going to set that down. In about the middle here. Line that up. Try to put it on straight. Straight as we can. And then I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna get out my mini trimmer here. And trim that up so it's nice and even. Okay. 
All right, there we go. So this is our piece. Then we're going to add this to our bumblebee layer. We can go ahead and add that on. I'm just using stamp and seal. Careful, that's really sticking to me. Some strong adhesive. Okay, we're just gonna put that right here like so. Looks about good. And then we're gonna add this to our early espresso. And then this whole piece will get adhered to our card front. And for that, I'm gonna use a little bit of liquid glue because I have this cut. It's such a narrow border that I wanna be able to slide it. Assuming it'll let me slide right there. Okay, there we go. And give that a good press. Let's turn it to the inside. I'm gonna take my bone folder. And I'm gonna burnish that down. Okay, so this card is almost finished on the outside. Now we're gonna take that sending lots of, and we are going to put this over at the edge of our bumblebee layer. And we're gonna put that down and we're gonna pop up our happy, which fits just between that white layer. Okay. So we're just gonna mount the sending lots of with stamp and seal. I'm just gonna add that to my card base here. Might move this down a little bit. A little bit more of my flower showing, but I don't think that's going to work out very good. In this particular design. There we go. Put that on there. And then I'm going to take some mini glue dots. And we're gonna take some edges. Let's put this down so you can see that. I'm gonna take the edges of my mini dimensionals and I'm gonna cut some pretty thin strips. And I'm gonna put them down on my Happy, the legs of my happy. And I'm going to do the same thing for the curlies over here on these, on the Y and the H. I don't want those showing. I'm going to have to trim this one. It's just a little bit on the long side. 
because of the curve of the letter. like that and then we can go back and add, grab our minis pop them on our letters here I want this to be well supported as well it's a pretty delicate piece now if you didn't want to fuss with all of this, you could easily just stamp it down on your card front. But I liked the dimension that it gave. I'm just going to pop those up. Got a couple more little pieces here to pop off. And it would be easier if I didn't have a band-aid on my finger. Which was not a crafting problem. It was a cat problem. <laughs> All right, now we're just gonna take this, make sure we have it on right. And then I'm just gonna lay it on here gently. Okay, and there's the front of our card. All right, so now the inside of our card, we're gonna take that piece that we cut off. And this apparently is not my, Okay, I need a different piece. I don't know what I did, but that's not the right one because that's not long enough. Okay, let's grab another scrap of early espresso. Not sure what I did with that piece I had cut. All right, so we're gonna take and cut this at seven eighths. run this clear across. We'll put this on and then we'll put this right on here and run it all the way across. We'll leave just a narrow border at the bottom. this side right here like this and give this a quick little snip and I'm going to add this here center that up all right then we can trim this even with the back of the card. 
Remember, you're cutting through two layers here. All right. Then I'm going to take a sentiment from uh, Peaceful Moments. We're going to stamp wishing you every happiness. Oh, it's already out. Every Wishing you every happiness this day will bring. And we're going to do that in the early espresso. Now, I found in order to get this straight, I'm going to take and flip this upside down. And then I'm going to turn my stamp upside down. And I'm going to give that a press. There we go. That allows me to line the top of my, the straight edge of my stamp up with the straight edge of the card base. Okay. So this card is finished as well. Now let's give that just a minute to dry while we do our envelope. Which really you should probably do it the same time as you're doing the rest of your stamping. Save yourself some time. I'm going to take the large stamp, but this time I'm going to go ahead and clean this off. I don't know why I grabbed the uh, terracotta tile. Because this time I'm going to use the Bumblebee. Let me give that a good ink. I'll put it right here. And I'm going to grab this smaller one here. I'm going to clean that off real quick. And I'm going to do it in the terracotta tile on the flap of my envelope. So, and then I'm going to get the early espresso. I'm going to get that center in early espresso. And that fell off my block again. Apparently I need to clean that block. And my little tiny stamp is just not staying on there the back of my stamp. That sometimes helps. Especially when it's so tiny. Clean the block. Clean the stamp. And then I shouldn't have any more issues. Let's get this out of the way before I muck up my card. Okay. So there we are. Hi, Cynthia. Welcome. Okay. So let's go ahead. This should be dry. We're going to add this to the inside of our card. Now, either one of these cards you could take and change the sentiments, and they could be used for any occasion. whatever you're needing. Okay. There we go. So there's that one. Let you look at that. To grab these out. I'll grab the first card 
And I don't, I'm not going to have time to make the third card. So what I'll do is I'll show you the third card that I did with the pretty perennials. And I'll quickly show you how I did the outside technique without putting the whole card together. This is really a simple card because this is a single layer card, pretty much. So we're just going to take a piece of... Whisper White. Okay. Got pieces already cut and stamped, so this one I made to go really fast. Okay, so we're going to take this card and I'm gonna find my bone folder real quick. Well, I'm not sure where I've got the other one, so we'll use this one. It's fine. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna get a piece of scrap paper. And I'm gonna take some temporary adhesive. You could use washi tape, whatever. And I'm just going to put a tiny little piece of um, adhesive on the back of my card. I'm going to line this up. Then I took a piece of vellum and I used the stitch rectangle squares, the third largest. And I cut with a half a sheet of vellum, I cut out the center of the vellum cardstock. And I'm going to just lay this down on my card and you can see that I can see through so I can see if I'm even on my borders. And then I'm gonna take a couple post-it notes and I'm gonna glue this down with my post-it notes. Now you could use post-it tape, which would probably work better if I had it handy. I'm going to take my blending brush and I'm going to, there's my blue right here. I'm going to take my blending brush. I'm going to grab my pool party and my Coastal Cabana inks. And I'm going to start with pool party. Okay, let me... I can see this isn't staying. And I don't want this to move on me. So I'm just gonna take some post-it tape and make sure that doesn't move. Okay, so I'm gonna take my pool party rub the very first bit off and then I'm going to blend on some pool party ink starting at the outer edges first and working my way in okay and I just want a real light color And then with the same brush, because I'm using the same, along the same color families, I'm gonna rub that out a little bit, but I'm not gonna worry too much because I'm going into Coastal Cabana, which is darker. I'm gonna rub some of that off. And then I'm gonna take one of the basic pattern masks, which you can find in the annual catalog, and I'm gonna place this over the top of everything here. And then I'm just going to rub here and there. I'm not wanting to ink the whole thing. 
And then I'm going to lift it up and see what I have. And that looks good to me. And then I can remove all of this. Okay. And then this is my card front. Now I can take my temporary adhesive here and I'll just rub it off. And there's the beginnings of my card, okay? Now to this, I've already cut, I've already stamped one of the pretty perennial flowers in uh, Rococo Rose and the center I did in black. And I've got a couple of leaves here that I can add. Take some liquid glue, put these together. Just a dot at the end. And stack those like so. Set those aside so that's ready to go. And then I'll take my Stamparatus one last time. And I'll pull up the one. Now this time I'm using photopolymer, so I'm gonna add back in my foam mat. And I already have this set up. So all I need to do is place my cardstock in there. And then I'm going to ink this up in Memento Black Ink. I'm going to stamp that down. inking just to make sure that it's a good solid black okay so I've got that now I can set this aside All right, so then to finish this off, I'm just gonna add my, pop my flower up there and from the A Wish for Everything, I've cut out the Easter from the dies. Where did I put those? What are they called? Mm. They're called the Word Wishes dies, and you get all the holidays, Mother's Day and Father's Day and New Year's and St. Patrick's and Halloween and Christmas and Thanksgiving. And there's the word day. And this goes along with this stamp set, which is actually a two uh, stamp set. So you have all of these holidays, Valentine's Day, which there's also a die for, and then all these inside sentiments to go along with it. Okay, this is in the annual catalog. They are not a bundle, so you would have to buy the stamp set and the bundle separately, or you could um, just buy one. And then that is how I'm going to finish off that card. Okay, and for the inside, I took one of those sentiments from A Wish for Everything 
and I put May the Beauty of Easter Fill Your Heart with Hope and used that blending stencil again and stamped a little flower in there. Okay, so there you have that. That's also using that pretty perennials. Just wanted to show you how versatile that stamp can be. So you can make Easter cards, birthday cards, anniversary cards, thinking of you cards, sympathy cards, whatever you would like. All right, so here are the cards that we made tonight. Hope everyone um, enjoyed that and got something out of it. And if you're watching on the replay, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy nights, as well as those of you who are watching live. Reminder, uh, Wednesday, the 24th, the, reti the retired list for the annual catalog will be out once uh, the consumable items or dies from those retiring um once they hit the retirement list they can sell out rather quickly so make sure you have what you want okay all right are there any questions for me comments oh thank you guys i'm so happy that you liked those cards i stayed up until 3 a.m this morning making some cards I was going to do something totally different tonight, and then I just felt like I needed to go this direction. So, all right. I will send everybody an email who's on my email list with that retired list. And uh, so you'll know, and I will get to you to look at the new annual catalog on that day as well. So we should have some ideas of what we're going to have for the new in colors with the retiring in colors that are going. All right, everybody. Have a good week, and I'll see you back here next Monday at 7.45 for another Facebook Live. Good night. Thank you.